Vision Forward's In Focus team presents. Hi, this is Luke Scriven here at Vision Forward. Welcome to another In Focus deep dive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using Windows Speech Recognition Service along with Microsoft Outlook to send emails and uh, open emails and things like that. Now, I did cover how to set up Windows Speech Recognition Service in another video, and I'll put a link in the description. But uh, in order to find it, if you need to, you can hit the Windows key, type in Speech, and you should find Windows Speech Recognition. And uh, it is best to kind of train it on your voice in order to get the best results. And uh, you will have to set up the, the microphone that you're using before you use it, but it's a pretty straightforward process. I do recommend using this with a headset as you will get the best results. So to, or to open up uh, Outlook from our desktop when we have speech recognition on, we can just say open Outlook and this will work for any program. Now we can, uh, at the moment I have the, the speech recognition sleeping, I'm able to turn it on and off with my voice by saying start listening and stop listening. In this video though, I'm just going to be using my mouse and clicking on the microphone icon at the top of the screen in order to do the same thing. Just makes it a little bit neater in terms of the demonstration. So let me turn it on and say uh, open Outlook. Open Outlook. Okay, and there we go, and I've just muted the speech recognition again so I can talk here. So we're in our inbox currently, and we have a number of emails in our inbox here. Let's go ahead and move through these emails. Um, we can issue the command move up and move down to move through the emails one by one. So let me give that a try now. Move down. Move down. Move up. Good, so we were just moving through those emails one by one. Now let's say that we want to open an email so it displays in its own window. What we're going to do here is use a press command. With the speech recognition service, if we say the word press, then we can tell the computer whatever keys we want to press. And this is going to be very important for our visually impaired users. For here, let's try and say press enter to open up this email. Press enter. Good, and we went ahead and opened up the email here. Now it's displayed in its own window. Now let's go ahead and close this window. We've uh, we've had enough of this one for now, so I'm gonna close the window just by saying close window. Close window. And there we go, we've closed the window. So we can see how we can easily move up and down and uh, open emails. Now there's some things that we're able to do with our voice. Um, that as a visually impaired user, we have to kind of do in a different way. And the reason that I say this is we could, let's say that we wanted to reply to this email, we could issue the command reply, but the trouble is that if reply is on the screen more than one time, it will actually put little numbers by every instance of the, of the phrase reply and ask which one we want to activate. And then we have to say the number and then say OK. Now the problem is that those numbers are small and not very easy to see as a person with a visual impairment. So this is where we're going to use our press commands because there are shortcuts that we can use that we might already be using with the keyboard to do things like reply, reply all, forward and so on. And we can actually do those with our voice. Let's go ahead and give that a try now. So I'm on an email at the moment and let's say that I want to reply to this email. Using the press command, I can say press control R and it will then uh, activate that reply shortcut. Let's give this a try. Press control R. Good, and I can see there on the right hand side where the email was displayed that now I am able to reply to this email. Now this is where we can start to dictate and so whenever we talk and it's not recognized as a command and we're in a text field, we're able to dictate text. So let me see if I can reply to this email. Hello! Exclamation mark. I am writing this doing a test of Windows speech recognition capabilities. 
period. And there we go, so now it's typed for us. Now what it's typed is hello, I am writing this doing a test ALV, Windows Speech Recognition Capabilities. And so it hasn't got it perfectly, and I think um, a lot of the reason for that is I haven't actually trained my voice profile fully. And so uh, it hasn't got the best representation of my voice, so sometimes it will make mistakes, as it has done here. Now we could use a press command here to send this email as well. So the keyboard command would be Alt and S. So I could say press Alt S, but I know actually that if I say send, there's only one instance of the word send here, or at least I think there is, and uh, it should send the email for me. So let's just try doing that. I'll try and say send, send. Excellent, and it has indeed sent that email for me. So we can see there that it's pretty easy to reply to the uh, to any email. Now we just have to remember when to use the press command and when we can just say the word. If in doubt, just use the press command if you know what it's going to be. So now let's take a look at how to send a new email. And uh, I should just be able to say new email in order to do it, but I have been having a bit of a problem with that. So I'm going to just try saying uh, the press command, which to create a new email is control and N. So let's try giving that press command, press control N and see whether that opens up a new email form for us. Press control N. And indeed it has done. So here's our new email form. Now we're currently in the to field where we can type in the email address of a person that we want to send the email to. If we've never sent them an email before, we could use the press command to send them an email. So for example, we could say press B O B shift to G M A I L period C O M. And that would have been bob at gmail.com. So imagine the computer, when you say press, it's now pressing each of those individual keys. It's a bit of a hassle, but uh, luckily, if we have sent the individual an email before, we should just be able to say their name. So I'm going to try and send an email to Corey. So I'm going to try and just say Corey and see whether it puts his email address in. Corey. And indeed it has there, so it's gone ahead and put uh, Corey's email address in, which is great. Now we're going to move to the subject field. If I just say subject, it should move us to that subject field. Subject. Excellent, and there we are in our subject field. Now we can dictate the subject of our email. So I'm going to go ahead and dictate uh, a little subject here. Let's give that a try. It's a beautiful day. And there we go, there's our subject. Now we need to move into the body of the email. Uh, I haven't found a, um, a kind of a regular way of doing this. I, I've been using a press command. So normally to get into that document body of the email, I would just press tab on the keyboard. So in this case, I'm just going to say press tab. Press tab. Now it's made a mistake here and it's actually uh, typed in pressed top. Um, my accent, for some reason, it finds it hard to understand me when I say the word tab. So uh, I'm going to delete what I just typed by saying delete that. Delete that. And it's gone ahead and deleted the last thing that I typed. Let me try and say press tab again. Press tab. And that time I put a bit more emphasis on the A and it uh, managed to understand what I was trying to say. So we've now moved into the body of the email. Let's go ahead and uh, dictate some text here. Hello, Corey, comma. I hope you are well today, period. The sun is shining outside and the birds have been singing all morning, exclamation mark. Now we definitely got a bit of an interesting sentence this time. We got, hello Corey, I hope you all well today, 
the sunny side and outside of the bits have been sitting old balding. <laughs> so it's definitely not exactly what we uh, tried for there. But again, I haven't trained my uh, my voice recognition profile. And the way the training works is you basically read some uh, preset um, text and the Windows speech recognition builds up a profile of your voice as you read the text. And actually, as you use it normally, um, it will start to build up a profile for you. So it does get better uh, with time in terms of its accuracy. Just to show you some editing commands here, um, I can say delete and then a specific word, and it's able to delete it for me. The trouble with this is, again, if we have more than one instance of that word, it will put little numbers by all of the instances, and I will have to say specifically which number matches the one that I want to delete, and that can be hard as a person with a visual impairment. Uh, but let me try and delete the word sunny side here. Delete sunny side. And there we go, it deleted it for us. Uh, I could delete everything if I wanted to by saying delete all. Let's give this a try. Delete all. Delete all. I seem to be having a bit of uh, trouble with this. Let's try one more time here. Delete all. Uh, okay, so it doesn't understand my voice, unfortunately, well enough to do that. And in fact, what it's doing is um, it thinks I'm saying delete old. Let's see if we can do this a different way, because I still know that I want to delete all. So I know that if I press on the keyboard, control and A, it would select all the text. And if I wanted to delete the text, I could then press the backspace and all the text is selected. So it would delete it all. So let's use press commands to simulate doing that. Press control A. Press delete. And there we go, I've managed to delete all the text using a alternative method. Now obviously it is very beneficial if you know all of these keyboard shortcuts already because it then allows you to um, do them with your speech recognition service as well. So the better you are with keyboard shortcuts, the more functional you will find the Microsoft speech recognition service. Let's try and dictate another sentence for Corey here. I hope you are having a lovely day, exclamation mark. Now let's try and underline this sentence. I'm going to say select all to try and select it, and then I'll say underline to underline it. Select all, underline, cancel, underline. And there we go, it took, it took a couple of goes, but we got there. And uh, so now our text has been uh, has been underlined, which is excellent. I think I'm ready to send this email. I'm going to say the word send, and it will send it for me. Send. And off the email goes to Corey. I'm sure he will be uh, very confused as to why he's received that, but uh, hopefully he will enjoy it. So that's a quick intro to using Windows Speech Recognition Service with Outlook. Um, there is a lot more that you can do, but I would suggest that you play around with it and get a feel for it. Like I say, the better you know your keyboard shortcuts, the more functional you're going to find this. So uh, why not uh, try it out? It is included with your Windows operating system, nothing additional to buy. So why not give it a try and see how you get on? And I hope you enjoyed this video. We do release new videos every Friday. And if you liked this one, please do like and subscribe. It really helps. And if you want to get in touch with us about technology or anything else, there's three different ways. You can call 414-615-0103. You can email uh, infocus at vision-forward.org. Or you can visit our website, vision-forward.org. Thanks a lot for watching and we will see you in the next video.